Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, March 23rd, 2018. Uh, I wanted to do a quick update on the markets. A lot of activity going on, a lot of movement in the markets lately. Uh, hence the reason for my increased you know, market analysis, both on the site with the static posts. I already shared my thoughts uh, yesterday as well as uh, this morning on the site with some static charts and price targets, where I think things are going. And I'll, and I'll go ahead and share that here on the um, uh, expand on a little more in this video. Uh, first of all, uh, you know what I'm looking for right now is I am near term bullish looking for a uh, uh, bounce today, but I remain intermediate uh, term bearish on the markets. Now near term means hours today. So I'm looking for a bounce. Uh, I'm not, you know, my convictions are not super strong, but I have hedged up. Um, you know, I still have my swing trade shorts. Those are one thing, a lot of individual stocks that I'm short and will you know, ride out. Um, you know, micromanage those trades appropriately, meaning sometimes take profits at a certain target, play the bounce, jump back in. But then um, as far as, uh, you know, the, the cues go, I've used this as a hedging tool to sort of hedge up uh, for two, two reasons. I started going long yesterday on that 163 level and added some more today um, because I do expect a, a bounce in the near term here. Um, and that also serves as a hedge. So if I'm wrong and the market goes down, you know, those swing short trade position, positions I have should continue to profit. Uh, although I'm, 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 I've hedged up to a, what I call a, you know, a, a net long positioning. In other words, I have enough QQQ derivatives, whether it's NQ, even these, um, you know, some of the leverage ETFs and IRA accounts, things like that, that a, a net long position just means that if you're short, let's say you're short, um, 10 stocks, they're all NASDAQ type, you know, higher beta stocks, you know, some of the trade ideas we have on the site right now, for example. Um, and uh, that, 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 that would be, you know, let's say you have $50,000 of shorts and you want to hedge up. Uh, you can take, uh, you know, $50,000 of QQQ long or any, you know, derivatives thereof that, that are, you know, comparable to that, that would be an, uh, a roughly equal hedge. Now, you know, those stocks may outperform the index, they may underperform, but that's one way to hedge. So a net long position then means you might take 60, 70,000 of QQQ against uh, $50,000 of short positions. Uh, and that's what I refer to when I'm saying, you know, net short or net long. So here it is. This is this is where we're at. We slightly undercut this 163 um, target, but uh, by a small amount, less than 1%. Remember, QQQ is a you know, 163, 162.49 as I talk right now. Uh, so a one point move is well under, you know, uh, 1%. It's only about, you know, six tenths or know, six tenths of a percent or so, something like that. Uh, so, uh, and more importantly, if we look down here, let's jump down to the 15 minute time frame, And this is what I, uh, um, what I'm looking at now. And I highlighted earlier today on the site, uh, we have a previous reaction low right here, right around 162. And you can see so far that's where we stopped. We also still have, as I mentioned on these intraday time frames, we still have potential. It's not confirmed. I need to see a bullish cross over here. So the cues need to giddy up now. They need to get going soon. If they go a lot lower, what's going to happen is um, the PPO will move to continue to move down and it will go on to take out this previous reaction low, thereby negating we're taking out this potential positive divergence. But as of now, we still have some potential bullish divergence as prices make a lower low. So this is this is how I like to trade. And again, you need to define your trading style. I'm looking for a very short-term bounce here that would probably you know run through today, um, possibly into the close, maybe fall shy. It depends. You know, we get a quick kick up to any of my targets, that could be it. Oh, or this could carry over into next week. Uh, so there it is. The queues are at support with potential divergence, um, pretty oversold on the near term chart. So my, I do favor, uh, continue to favor and I'm positioned for a bounce up to, um, you know, this 165, 64 level. That's first target. You have a trend line to contend with here. And if that gets taken out, um, these, this would be pretty much my uppermost target. I'm going to go over the 60-minute charts in a second and show you some targets. So right now, let's just say I favor a bounce up to, you know, about this 169-ish level um, and possibly more. There, keep in mind, there's a gap here to be backfilled. Gaps are often backfilled at some point. So, um, 
you know, I can easily see this 170, 80-ish level being hit. Uh, if you want to quantify that, uh, you know, if you're whether you're an active trader trying to game a bounce or you're, you know, you're short the queues uh, and you're wondering how much give back you might have, well, that'd be a bounce of about 5% if we get there. We, we, if we just come in and, and test the bottom of that gap, that's about a 4% bounce. And if we hit my, my shallowest uh, minimum target here, you're still looking at a bounce of almost 2%. Uh, and I'm looking at the pop-up box to the left, guys, if you want to back that up and see those numbers. Uh, back up the video. And here's the cues on the 60-minute chart. So, uh, again, this is my bounce target range. I know that's a lot of number. Well, that's that's actually the support, the 163 support I've been harping on lately. But uh, I'm not showing it here. But there's that reaction low around 162. So, so far, that's where we went down. So, again, we undercut my, my, my near-term target by just a hair, less than a percentage point. But we're right back up out on it now. You can see as I do the video, the price is right here, 162.92. So, we're effectively on that level again. You have $163 security. Um, you talk 10, 15, 20 cents, even a dollar is minimal, especially when you have a lot of volatility. That's just the nature of the beast. You're going to have these swings. You have what I call overshoots of support and resistance levels um, in a fast moving market. So uh, there's my bounce target ranges all the way up to about 169. And, you know, on the 60 minute chart, 168.19, I could see the possibility of a rally up there. Um, that would be, let's try to quantify it for you here with the measuring tool. We're just below 163 right now. And if we go all the way up there, there's about a three, three and a quarter percent. And again, there's that big gap. If we happen to backfill that gap, uh, it's possible. I'm not favoring that now. These are my preferred. This is my, my really my uppermost preferred target bounce target now, 168. 19 ish give or take there's that gap i talked about again on the 15 minute chart so um you know we'll just have to i'll just have to gauge the nature of this bounce as and if it happens to try to see if we're going to work our way all the way up there but ultimately i do see more downside guys so if you're a longer term trader <clears throat> you have to define your trading style you have to set your stops um, if you weren't short and you want to be short, these same bounce targets that I'm talking about here can serve as entry levels. You can maybe start scaling in on my minimum target if that's hit, uh, you know, somewhere around here, uh, scale in all the way up to here. And then at that point, if we start to backfill the gap, I probably wouldn't be adding to shorts. I'd see how, how the markets act if we happen to backfill that gap. Um, and then if we take that out, uh, especially on a closing basis, we'd probably go to new highs. But again, I do not do not see that now. I don't favor it. Anything's possible. And if we, you know, if this rally starts to get some more legs, and we start to get up to this area up here, um, you know, uh, in this gap right here is what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll I'll start to. Uh, well, I'll give you updates along the way. Let's just not get ahead of ourselves. I'm probably rambling too much about what could happen. You know, this wouldn't happen today. That's that's better than a 5% move to get up there. So uh, let's let's just cross that bridge if and when we come to it. So again, back to the 15-minute chart. There it is. There's the levels. And that's what I see, something like that. And to just uh, complete my analysis, and we'll wrap this video up, keep it a quick one. Um, I'll look at the the big components. Here's my watch list of the uh, top components of uh, the Nasdaq 100. I have them sorted by market cap. Uh, I'll start out with the 800-pound gorilla in the room, Apple, the uh, largest publicly traded company in the world, largest component of the Nasdaq 100, largest component of QQQ. And you can see that Apple has fallen to support. This is another reason I'm favoring a bounce. This is the first tag of this support level in a while. We had a lot of reactions back here. You can see this level uh, going back. We had a breakout. Uh, let me grab a circle tool. Um, we had a breakout right here. We gapped up and then we back tested that level for months, actually, a couple months. So a lot of reactions off that level. And then the bigger picture on Apple is we broke down. I pointed it out before it happened and then right after it happened here, um, stating we had a very well defined uptrend line. You can see it there off the uh, late 2017, uh, 2016 lows. A lot of reactions on that trend line. There was a breakdown uh, that confirmed that sell signal in the US markets. Uh, we hit that 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 support zone right there, uh, reversed, back tested, and rolled back down. And I do think, 
although I do favor a little reaction here because we're at a pretty decent support. We haven't had to hit this support level in a while. So far, you can see that Apple is reversing or has started to bounce off there. We're up about a quarter percent. So again, this, this jives with my analysis for the broad market, you know, a little kickback rally. And eventually, I think Apple comes down. Uh, I'll give you some targets before on that, but probably all the way down here to this 142-ish area uh, after this bounce has run its course, if we get the bounce that I'm looking for. Amazon, uh, there's some minor support here. If you look at this line I have right there, you can see some reactions. Uh, we did have a wedge-type pattern, which it's broken down from. So like everything else, um, please, you know, I try to impress upon you guys near the difference between my near term outlook and intermediate term outlook. <clears throat> near term is hours to days. Intermediate term is days to weeks. Uh, and then longer term is months out. Uh, so right now, the my intermediate outlook for the markets and all these top components of the NASDAQ 100 is clearly bearish. And I do think Amazon is headed lower in the coming weeks here, possibly months. Uh, but in the near term, it has some support here. It's holding on to here's a trend line on a 120 minute chart. We're still above that trend line. Of course, there's a divergent high. So I think that trend line will go. You can see negative divergence on just about any time frame. This is a 120 minute chart or you can look up here it says two hours uh there's an hourly chart with some trend lines etc let's not spend too much time on there uh here's alphabet alphabet one of the largest components and this is one one of the share classes g-o-o-g -O -O uh you can see this is what i'm looking at i have dual support levels just below alphabet this is trend uh, a price support right here you can see a lot of reactions this is not just a randomly placed line one two three four uh, three reactions from below we broke out came in back tested that level we had another reaction there and there we are so this is why i'm bullish today on the market near term because we have a lot of stocks that have fallen to this support level and as i often say the initial tag of support from above is often followed by a reaction now by initial yes we hit it a lot of times before we hit it here by initial i mean i just mean we haven't visited this trend line in quite a while this is the first tag of this trend line since this big rally up here in this drop and if you're not familiar with the terminology when you're on right side of the chart on the site uh, if you notice any of the text with a squiggly uh, underline beneath it uh, hover over that that's called text hover it'll give you a tool tip they call that a pop-up and so i define the word reaction which you can see on the site if you hover it as a pause or bounce um, so there's two ways to have a reaction you can fall to support and so far, the reaction off, um, uh, you know, QQQ, for example, off that uh, this support level here, see that 162.40 level, it, it it's more of a consolidation. We hit that level, we haven't really bounced much. It's like dropping a ball. You can drop a, a bouncy ball, a basketball. You drop that, you know, from a high level like this, a sharp move down, and that basketball will bounce. And that's one type of reaction. The other type is if you drop a, a ball of clay, it's going to hit the floor and stay there. That's the other type of reaction. It just means that we had a lot of downward velocity going there and we hit it, boom, and we've stopped so far. Now, we still may bounce or we can just consolidate here, have a reaction where we just consolidate um, for a day or so. That's where we closed yesterday and we're still trading, fighting around that level now. It's a battle between the bulls and the bears. So that's what I mean by consolidation, whether uh, we bounce or have a... Um, just hold on that level for a little while before it gives way. Uh, obviously, um, if we only hold there and then break that support level with conviction, we start moving impulsively lower. That's pretty darn bearish. It just shows that there are not many buyers left in this market at this point in time. There's the other share class, class A. Again, you can see this trend line. This trend line is very well defined. So here's Alphabet, one of the world's largest companies, one of the largest components of the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, just like Apple, at support. Um, in fact, at dual intersecting support levels, both trend line support and price support right there around 150 uh 1054 um with some support below if that's taken out here's a gap and there's a reaction there's a reaction uh so uh longer term these divergences tell me that this trend line will go these support levels will go but uh, uh if you're shorting too aggressive right now you might have to write out a counter trend bounce first that's where i'm going with this video uh, Microsoft, this longer term looks bearish, uh, but there's still tr two trend lines here. I have a primary trend line, the white one, and an alternative trend line. 
Um, I do think it's headed lower in the coming months, and I think uh, at minimum Microsoft will come down and see this 79.67 level, which gives it a, a drop of another uh, 12%, um, but I don't think it'll be a straight line down. And then finally, we'll look at Facebook. Again, one of the largest components in what I've dubbed the fame, fame stocks, F-A-A-M-G, uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and uh, Microsoft. And you can see support. There it is. So this is the case. This is me making the case that I'm seeing a lot of uh, not only the index, uh, at least the Qs. That's what I'm focused on right now. But I'm seeing these market leading stocks all having fallen to support. Um, those support levels, I do think, will eventually give way, and they could give way today. I'm not married to this, you know, my bounce scenario. I am net long, hedged up against the shorts I have. But uh, if I if I see something I don't like, I'll throw those uh, longs away. Uh, take a small loss and move on. But uh, as of now, I still think we can bounce here. And there's Intel. Again, bearish looking charts. I mean, if I honestly, if I had to just be long or short, shut things down and, and you know, travel around the world, sail around the world for a month, I would be short. I uh, just set, you know, short shorts on all these stocks or on the broad markets and i you know my targets down here i'd have buy to cover limit order set down here 43 this is where intel before all is said and done i think is headed but it's not going to be a straight shot down never is uh, rarely is uh it'll be something like this you move down hit support i don't know why this arrow tool won't work here we go and you you know you work your way down there so if you guys are bullish looking to get long uh, that's a pretty good support level. There's a big old gap right there. Uh, you can see it here. Maybe we backfill that gap. Uh, maybe not. And even uh, sometime in 2018, I think this level here, this 3843 level gets hit. Um, yeah, in 2018, maybe 20, early 2019, we'll see. But that's what the charts look like right now to me. So um, you can either, you know, put some shorts on and, and sit tight with stops not too far above the recent highs. It's all relative to your price targets, or you can actively trade these rips and dips uh, as I like to do. So we'll wrap it up here and uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted. So far, we're still cues as I've done this video and all morning QQQ is fighting with that level. The reaction, like I said, so far, it is one of consolidation, a pause from this, this sharp drop down. So it's that analogy I use like a, you know, dropping a ball of clay, uh, it's hit the floor. Um, but uh, the day is not over. So we're either going to bounce up, hit some of my targets, then reverse, or we consolidate here and, and there's just not enough willing buyers to step in and we continue down to the next targets here, which would be these trend lines, these intersecting trend lines, as well as this 156.40 support level on QQQ. There, um, we might have an opportunity to go long. We'll just have to see how the charts look at the time. Okay, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Have a great day, and good luck with your trades.